thank you for watching the Animal One Guys YouTube channel. If you like this video, please leave a like and leave me a comment. And if you like a lot of my content, please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks, guys. So, metabolic bone disease. What is it? How do you identify it? How do you know if a limb has it or not? Well, there's... This is honestly much more simple, guys, than a lot of people um, think it is. It's just a problem with their skeletal structure where their bones did not develop correctly. Why the bones didn't develop correctly is there's normally two sources. So everyone will say, hey, it's because, you know, you didn't, you didn't give them a, a UV light. What do you think about that? Yes. Yes. Swing around in there. Um, move that arm. Good. So it can be lack of UV, uh, lack of UVB to be specific, which is the ultraviolet uh, wavelength in which some reptiles need in order to take the take and synthesize and absorb the calcium that they get fed to feed their bones the other one is they're just not being fed enough calcium in their diet which is why in captivity here we have calcium no i'm not sponsored how unfortunate for me and normally then it's a combination of the two so yeah, you can have this great UV light, but if they're not getting calcium in their diet, diet, excuse me, they're going to have problems. Or you can give them a ton of calcium, but if it's a species that requires a UV light, then they're going to have problems. Now, that is not always the case. There are lizards. Uh, Savannah monitor is a great case where it really doesn't need UV. You can pump a little bit more calcium into it. But if you're giving it a calcium-heavy diet because of the amount of prey that they eat, they can avoid MBD uh, without UV. Leopard geckos don't need UV. They basically are in their hides. They come out at night, so they never would really see sunlight in the wild. And these guys eat, leopard geckos eat calcium like crazy. You even put calcium in like a little food bowl in their cage, and they will lick and eat the calcium powder. So they get a ton of calcium through their diet, and they do not need UV to um, synthesize it. Now, again, if they got a little bit of UV, normally it doesn't do any downside. You can stress your animal out with too much UV if it's one that's not used to having too much UV, and it doesn't have a way to get rid of it and hide. But in bearded dragons, they need both. They need UVB from their light, and they need calcium whether you're feeding them bugs and you dust it or you're feeding them veggies and you dust the veggies they need uv light and if you look at the ferguson index it will actually tell you how strong your uv uh, rays should be for your bearded dragon and most of the time they're going to want uv in their basking location so then you can take a uv reader and you can read the uv at that location and make sure it's enough Excellent. So, how do we tell then after? Well, you're going to want to check the joints. You know, if you notice something is wrong, like this guy, we're rehabbing her through physical therapy, and we are checking range of motions on the joints. Now, you did see, let's get down and drop this up so you can really see what's going on here. You did see her moving around, which is really good. The sling hangs are just off the ground, but she favors her front right leg, this one right here. Uh, and this is the one that's got some problems and we're going to get into that and we're going to get into checking the rest of the joints and, and everything. But number one is knowing how the reptile's joints are supposed to function. That is going to be a big deal because if you don't know the range of motion that a healthy joint is supposed to have, then how the heck are you going to be able to identify a joint that's got problems, right? So with bearded dragon specifically, let's look at the front legs first. So 
Again, this is the nice part of being in the sling here, just her ability to stretch her joints. But I'm gonna prop her up just a little bit. So we know that this leg is good, or I at least know it's good. So we're gonna check the joints. So there's a couple joints that we're gonna look at to check. We're gonna be interested in the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder, all right? Let's turn her a little bit. So first we're gonna check the wrist. Should be able to bend flat, which it can. So when they're walking, we want to make sure that this doesn't have like a, a permanent bend in it. So we want to make sure it's nice and flat. It has the ability to get to that. Great. And then we want to make sure it'll bend at just about 90 degrees, which it does. Which for a bearded dragon, that's going to be their motion. Flat 90 degrees at the wrist. Elbow. We're going to want to make sure that it can bend uh, so that the bicep and the forearm touch. I know this isn't really a bicep, but that's okay. But also, it should be able to extend straight out. Now, the other thing with knowing how these joints work is you need to know in what position the arm has to be in to make this joint extend straight out. So forward, it's going to get to here, and you'll think, hey, there's something wrong with the joint. So bearded dragons will put their arms flat. Their arms need to rotate at the shoulder so that it's parallel with the body. And then at which point the arm will stretch out like this with the uh, palm facing in. And all of this, I'm putting no pressure. It's normal range of motion. It's not hurting her at all. It moves to here. That's great. So that we have a 100% working elbow. And then we're going to check the shoulder. So we should have normal up and down and a little bit of front and back. And we should be able to rotate, which is great when we extend the arm back we should have even more range of motion and we do perfect now let's turn her this way and let's look at the trouble arm now already we know we've seen her this is kind of the arm standard position so we know that's a problem we've seen her walk and really favor this arm so we know that's a problem but let's identify where in the arm if it isn't obvious to everyone the problem is where did the bone not grow correctly, got deformed in a certain shape, didn't grow enough, grew too much, twisted, just there's a variety of things that it could cause. So we're going to start normal. Now, when I pick up this arm, it's much more favored. Do you see how hard it is to move even at the shoulder? She's favoring it much more. And uh, more than likely, it's because of the problems with it rather than pain? What do you think? If there was pain, we'd really see a lot of the uh, mouth opening. You you could tell. So first thing we're going to check is shoulder. It's pretty, pretty decent actually. Forward and back, up and down, circular. We're going to check the wrist. We got a good 90 degree bend and we got flat. Now, the problem here is in the elbow and I'll show it. You guys probably already guessed that. So first thing we're going to do is try to stretch the elbow this way. Okay, we see this little bend that we have here, but that's all right. We have to rotate the shoulder so the palm is facing in and then stretch the arm. And I'm doing this so you guys can see. Right here, that's it. I cannot stretch this arm uh, anymore. Just, oh, Okay, I know. Did that hurt maybe a little bit? It sure enough. I didn't put any pressure on it. I just got it to where it didn't move anymore. But did you guys see that? There was still a night. We'll do it again. Right here. That's as far as I can push the arm without really, you know, cracking it. So look at this bend that's here. So we know that that elbow hasn't formed correctly. Now look at how much tighter it bends in like this. It bends completely flush. Uh, because the joint didn't form correctly. It shouldn't be able to get this completely flush this way. It should be able to go completely flush that way. So we got a problem here. Back legs. Okay. These move so easy. Which is probably like, what the heck? They can, should be able to move in a full ball joint there. And again, the back legs, this is what's nice, should be able to go straight, even without being next to the tail and then should be able to go just about straight next to the tail like so and then we check at the wrist flat and bent up beautiful oh yeah nice and easy movement back here bend up go flat 
straighten the leg at the knee. Beautiful. So those, those are really good. So we know that there's no problem in the back legs. Back legs are exactly what a healthy bearded dragon should get. We know that there's just a, a slight, slight problem probably with this leg in the shoulder joint. Very minor. Uh, and then we know that we have a slight problem in the shoulder joint here, but a, a big problem with the elbow. And really all we can do is make sure that it's not causing any pain in any of the movements. And there's not much correcting to do other than teaching your lizard to deal with it. And, you know, maybe they got a walk special or maybe they need an aid. But um, that's what we're going to do, guys. Anyways, this is about Bearded Dragon MBD and how to identify which joints have it. Take care, guys.